A new Call of Duty means a new game to get used to, from things like the base fundamentals to gunplay to everything in between. Today, I want to run down some tips to help you get better at Vanguard so that you can improve overall and start running any of the lobbies you're in. So that said, as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. Did we miss anything that you think is a glaring tip to help you do better? Have any of these tips, if you end up using them, been able to help you in any way, shape, or form? Whatever the case, feel free to let me know down below in the comments. But if you do enjoy the video, make sure you drop a like down below. Let's aim for 2,000 likes on this video. Seriously, thank you guys so much for the continued support recently. You guys have been crushing it, and I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you'd like to join the community, if you guys are new to the channel, about 60% of viewers are not subscribed. So if you're new and want to stay together with all things Vanguard, whether that be MP tips and tricks, camo guides and things coming up, and anything in between, hit that subscribe button so you do not miss a single thing. That said, let's jump into these tips and how you can improve. So let's start out with the basics. Let's start out before you even jump into the game. One of the first things that I would highly recommend is to perfect some settings here. We talked about and broke down a ton of settings in which you should be using here within Vanguard for either console versions or on PC as well to maximize your performance, quality, and all things like that. That can be found on the channel here, but one thing that I'm not talking about in particular in relation to the gameplay itself deals with the field of view feature. This, for console players, is returning from Black Ops Cold War. Didn't have it in the beta, so it may be a nice reminder. PC players may already have this set up here, but setting your field of view is entirely up to you. I've always said that my sweet spot is right around 110. It's not too distorted or fishbowl to like you would see with the max of 120, but it's also not nearly as tight as the default 80. Biggest thing though is that it's entirely personal preference. Your sweet spot may be drastically different than mine and that's totally cool. But one thing that I definitely recommend and I think will help out your gameplay is taking a look at the ADS field of view options. These come down to two, independent and affected. Independent will end up zooming your field of view to its normal value, which is tethered to that base of ADFOV. So when you aim down sight, it zooms in way more than normal by comparison. Affected, on the other hand, that ends up scaling your ADS field of view so that whenever you aim down sight, whatever FOV you're on with optics are lower than 3.25 magnification, that's going to have more peripheral vision as opposed to the base independent or that standard ADFOV. It might take a little bit of getting used to, but on top of offering you a little bit more information while aimed on sight, it also should make aiming feel a little bit more natural. Next, continuing on before we jump into the gameplay itself is start by crafting a class for your skill sets. There are definitely some things that I think work for everybody. Personally, I've seen some really big helps in my favorites in the ways of perks like high alert and radar, different lethals and tacticals. I usually always run stims, things like that. So breaking that down a little bit further, high alert, though I've been running a lot of engineer doing my launcher challenges early on here, trying to get those gold as well, which don't worry, we'll have some tips here on that launchers are a huge pain but can be made a lot easier so stick around here on the channel with that but high alert of course giving you that information as to when somebody focuses you radar a big one this year because you don't have the traditional mini map with shots showing up from your enemies so this is something that is great though personally i'd recommend this for the lower combat pacings things like 6v6 because with blitz you're basically going to have gunfire in every area of the map so it's almost not worth using in that regard because you can use things like high alert and utilize when somebody's going to be looking at you get that ping. It just isn't that best tier two park if you ask me at that point. But for 6v6, we're not going to have everybody around you all the time. Absolutely is helpful. But finding those things that end up working for your specific class outside of just the weapon build, that's entirely preference based, but take some time to examine what you want to get out of your gameplay experience and then custom tailor your class around that so you can achieve those. Additionally, take some time to look through some of the ammo modifications and types when you look at these weapons. This game tries to take Modern Warfare's gunsmith experience and kind of amplify it a little bit further. So of course, while we have 10 attachments available, a lot of the creator class doesn't penalize you for taking all 10. But when you have things like different ammo can versions, you can end up getting different fire rates, different damage values, different bullet velocities, and all things like that. So it's definitely worth at least investigating. And again, trying to custom tailor to something that you think feels the best for your gameplay experience. When it comes down to weapon selection, right now I'm saying that I think that rifles will reign supreme this year. It's absolutely something that treads up close and personal, but also it's that job done at a distance as you definitely should be able to see. SMGs are still solid. You'll of course have other options of play. LMGs are solid right now as well, but for the sake of doing better and improving, rifles are probably going to be your best bet throughout the year. Now, coming back to and talking a little bit further about how to kit these out, the next tip is to take a look at weapon builds and make builds for accuracy and recoil control this year. These are going to be just as important as things like your aim down sight speed and your sprint out speed, your sprint to fire speeds with all of that. So that's something 
that it's an interesting twist on this year. Accuracy for sure. This was something that was introduced with this year in which it's new weapon attachment abilities to combat a new thing in Call of Duty. It's been in the gaming and shooter scene for a while, but that being a new mechanic of Bloom, meaning that whenever you aim down sight, there will be some subtle pattern of randomness, some RNG to where your shots are placed. Not too terribly off the mark, but definitely something that if you take a look at long range where those bullet trails go, they won't always be in the exact spot that you're aiming at. So accuracy, these attachments that increase the accuracy with it, that actually mitigates that a little further so that it is more point and click. Just bear that in mind when building your weapons. Kind of expanding upon that, the next thing you really want to do is make sure that your weapons are ranked up because this drastically helps your potential to do well with those weapons. A lot of the attachments later on in the weapon ranks do some great things for your weapons potential. And while it's not as linear as Cold Wars where you could say, okay, I need to get to this specific level for this specific attachment every single time, it does open the door for better options in your weapon builds the higher ranked your weapons are so make sure that you're ranking up all the weapons that you can be not only just for later on whenever the war zone integration will happen and making sure you have everything on offer there but also just so you can have the best potential with those weapons next we're going to talk about some power positions now we're getting into the gameplay of everything because each map here has basically one or two main power positions that you can end up controlling and then can control the entire flow of the map in sometimes maps like Demyansk, the top roof of the church that's something that overlooks that little river valley going to B flag, it overlooks that entirely. So you can pick off people left, right, and center, and you can control where they go. They essentially have to then go all the way around to the right side on the bridge. Maps like Dome, of course, those upper levels, you can control the flow of how the map will go, though a lot of the times the spawns can flip you out of that. Maps like Sub Pens, that upper room, that's where all the action's mainly going to be focused. If you control that room, you control whoever ends up winning those games most of the time, unless you're playing Domination, because then you'll still lose because nobody's going to be. So each map has some power positions, and knowing where those are controlling those that will help you out greatly next little tip here to help you improve make sure you have your gun up so you can gun down your enemies strafing is a hundred percent key within this game we'll talk about it in the next tip here but the ttk and vanguard is very similar to modern warfare and is relatively unforgiving so if you're tax sprinting around that's great to get from point a to point b but if you're going into a gunfight it's not your best option and oftentimes will get you killed knowing those power positions how the flow of the map will work where players will be coming from that is something that when anticipating that getting your gun up will help you up in those gunfights tremendously so make sure you have that gun up ready for a fight with that last tip in mind realizing with that faster pace that faster ttk your individual pace needs to be slowed down to control the play to how you want it to come out and i don't mean that by camping but if you're a rusher like me you run headfirst into everything unlike cold war black ops 4 and other games with slower ttks that's not going to work in this game as with modern warfare 2019 the ttk is far too fast for that with some attachments on weapons quite literally making certain guns kill in 200 milliseconds for reference that's faster than the pre-patched dmrs in warzone back in season one of the integration of cold war last year for perspective in mp it's two shots with some weapons so if you're going to want to control the map play of how everything goes out you're going to have a method your madness to control those angles to your ability not be reacting so make sure you slow down that pace think things through a little further i'd highly recommend patrolling certain areas returning back to those power positions you control those areas of play you control the entire map next information is everything you can absolutely go for lethal streaks but i find that honestly given your simple non-lethal streaks are sometimes the best bet usually i end up running uav local informants with dogs mixed in there so i can get some extra kills but sometimes i'll also throw in that standard intel for good measure so that all three of my streaks end up giving me information on where enemies are it allows me to have that gun up so i can get from point a to point b without really being thrown off guard so that I can utilize that tax sprint still I can still fly around the map but I'll do it a little bit more methodically I don't have to play so cautious I don't have to turtle back into any area I can do that a little bit more confidently knowing where those gunfights are going to come from next utilize that mini map while you may not be running the perk of radar you can still absolutely use that to get information on where enemies may be if you're alone on the mini map chances are you're in enemy territory so make sure you're paying attention to the flow of how everything works out where those enemies may be by those context clues of if they're not around you if you have a headset use that as well that's something that audio while not the best in this game still is something that helps out tremendously and finally in terms of tips one that i was honestly debating on just putting right up front the very first tip but instead figured you know what we'll get into some actual things with this is party up that's not possible for everybody but if at all possible party up having that information those extra set of eyes ears to be able to spot and scout out enemies that's something that helps out tremendously having the communication of knowing where enemies are from just utilizing other teammates that is everything and additionally the way 
way matchmaking works in Vanguard in recent years is that, well, playing in a party helps drastically mitigate what you'll be going up against. If you're playing solo and you're a high stat player, chances are you're going to be going up against a lot of other high stat players. But with that sort of variance that a party can afford, you might not be doing that every single time. And actually, final, final tip, if you ever hear an enemy glide bomb coming in, if you're like me, just accept your fate, your streak's over. But anyways, that's some tips here to help you out, improve your game drastically. Taking even just the smallest of things into consideration can have the biggest of impacts in your game within Vanguard. So hopefully this helps you out in some way, shape, or form. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do any of these tips help you out? Anything that you're not doing out of your ordinary? Anything you'd add to this list? Feel free to let me know. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you do not miss a single thing regarding all things Vanguard. A lot of stuff here still coming up over the weekend and into the next couple of weeks. So make sure you stick around here for all of it. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to chat with me outside of YouTube. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever the case may be, links in the description below. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.